Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Today is the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Again, as for the past weeks, Jesus teaches us about the Eucharist. The Heavenly Father says, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The celebrant for this Mass is Father James Hickey. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Joseph Corrieri. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please rise and join with us in our entrance song. Number 768 in the Green Book, Gather Your People, number 768. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good, afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Thank you very much. I want to thank the folks that are doing the music. They're putting everything they can together because our music people are uh, doing the music usually and not available. So thanks very much. Shall we thank them? Thank you very much, you guys. All right. Very good. We've been talking about the Eucharist. I want to do that again today. I want to breach a topic that may be difficult. And I want you to take a step right now and check out where you are and where I am as regards my conscience and yours in obedience to God. Christ, you have come down from heaven to bring us back to heaven Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Good Father, have mercy on every one of us. Forgive anything we've done wrong and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Let's sing the Gloria, shall we? God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Oh, 
the most high Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father take a moment of just quiet between ourselves and our dear God maybe we could close our eyes let us pray almighty ever living God you have taught us by your Holy Spirit and by the teaching of Jesus himself to call you our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your daughters and sons, that we may merit to enter into that inheritance which you have promised through our Lord. Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please may I invite you to use the green book. The readings begin on, page, on number 983. Again, the same theme of, of food as will come up in the Gospel. 983. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, as God forgives you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessing the Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Thank you. The gospel of our Savior according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I've come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. Christians, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Evangelica Dicta. 
Deli Antur Nostra Delicta. Lord Jesus, I ask you in your great love, let this thing make sense and let it be a help. May I do it by your grace. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So I apologize if you heard me last week at the 10, um, but I really feel I need to do this talk clearly. It's a delicate one. We've been reading John chapter 6 for three weeks. That gets interrupted next Sunday because it's the 15th of August, the Assumption of Mary. And then the following week is the climax of chapter 6, a major issue. The reason I want to bring this up is that there's an issue about communion that I need to carefully and wisely talk about. At the priest's devotion at communion, the church gives him two prayers to say silently. This is the one I use all the time. May the receiving of your body and blood, my Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in my mind and body and a healing remedy. So there's two strange words in there, judgment and condemnation. History can help you while they're there. During my lifetime and yours, we've been at the beginning of a real change, a massive change about communion. We used to go into communion every time we go to mass. That has not been true for most of history. Most Catholics in centuries past would receive communion once a year at Easter. And if you go further back into the Dark Ages, many Catholic Christians, and they were the people in the West, everybody was Catholic, probably went to communion once in his lifetime or her lifetime. But for the past two centuries, there's been a major movement of the Holy Spirit in the Catholic Church, which eventuated in the change of the Church's liturgy that you and I have experienced. About 115 years ago, that got a great boost. The Pope at the time was St. Pius X, and he changed the practice of First Communion. So, for example, St. Teresa of the Child Jesus, the little flower, she received the First Communion at 14, which was typical. The Pope changed it and said anybody having reached the age of reason, seven years old, should go to Communion, and he emphasized going frequently. Let me tell you a story. I received First Communion in 1650. (laughs) Wait a minute, I get that wrong. How about 1950? It was the whole year. And about midsummer, it was not quite this late, maybe mid-September or July, my dad said to me, Jimmy boy, I think it's time for you to receive Communion a second time. And in my naivete, I said, but Daddy, I've received seven times. And he was upset. It completely was opposite to what he felt was the way you go to communion. And what would happen would be, there were various things invented by the church, like the Lady Sodality or the Holy Name Society. They were systems of having people go to communion more frequently. So when they had their, you know, the... uh, Communion breakfast for the Holy Name. The Saturday before that evening, he'd go down to St. Anne's and go to confession. And when he came home, he would talk to no one until the next morning at the early Mass, he received communion. For him, it was a moment of awe and reverence. It was a powerful experience. Then things shifted as they've shifted in your life and mine. But it may have left us with a difficulty. Let me explain. In the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, St. Paul offers us the oldest account of the Last Supper. And after he teaches about it, he says this, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup 
unworthily will have to answer for the body and the blood of the Lord. For he or she in, eat, drinks, eats or drinks judgment. There's that word again for himself. What's the point? I could receive communion unworthily. And that would be a sacrilege. I dare say that lots of Catholics don't know that. That's an issue of catechesis. But I think there's a change happening that's very positive. We have a lot of funerals. I've noticed something that's changed. You probably have seen me do this at communion time. I explain some people can't go to communion for various reasons. One of them might be that they're not prepared spiritually. And I notice people that I would perceive as nominally Catholic, that is, they're not usually practicing their faith. They come up not for communion. They come up for the blessing. And I find that very heartening. That's honesty. That's faith. I never say anything to you that I don't say to myself. You need to see my own awareness of Christ's requirements for me as well as for you. So some people are not able to go to communion. They're not Catholic. Some people are too little. They haven't received First Communion. And sometimes we Catholics are not prepared. Let me give you an example. It occurs in the second reading, which Diane read so well. Paul writes to the Ephesians and he says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, reviling must be removed, and all malice. So he's not talking about the usual things we talk about. Adultery, or fornication, stealing a lot of money. Very often our sins are things that have to do with the great teaching of Jesus about love. And though Christ doesn't do this about Holy Communion, he does it in the great Sermon on the Mount. Remember, if you come to worship, and he's talking about before the end of the Old Testament, and you bring your gift to the altar, and you recall that your brother or sister has something against you, stop worshiping. Leave the gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother or sister. Now, I think that's a really powerful idea, and I bet you have that in your heart. Sometimes I'm amazed at confessions. Somebody comes in and says, I really need to talk to you. My wife and I had an awful row. I was a real jerk. I'm really sorry. I can't possibly go to communion until I reconcile. So the penance would be, go home and love her. Make it up. We're called to be people of love. We're called to be good people. This issue of encouraging people to go to confession for serious sin before going to communion can be easily rejected. I know that. But it's important that you realize that it's based on Scripture. St. James talks about this, the confessing of our sins to each other in chapter 5. And he does at the end of his, that chapter 5, he says this, My friends, if any of you should stray from the truth and someone bring him back, he should know that whoever brings back a sinner from error will save his soul from death. There's a prayer that I've been affected by. I have to say it was two wonderful people in this parish that shared with me the Divine Mercy Chaplet. I say it every day. I say it for you. I say it for myself. There's a big thing in Scripture about sins I don't know about. You probably know them because you can see me, but I miss them. I mean, we think we're all okay, but we're not always okay. The chaplet ends with this prayer. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look 
kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will which is love and mercy itself and I always finish it by saying of course it's your son Jesus would you say amen, amen. let's stand Do you believe that God Almighty is your Father? That he made everything and he made you? I do. I do too. Do you believe that he sent a Savior? Jesus the Lord who died on the tree, rose from the dead and is the Lord of everything? I do. You bet. Do you believe that the Holy Spirit is always active? That he makes us the church of God? That he makes us united to the saints and the angels? That he gives us forgiveness and he will give us eternal life? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I do too. So we believe in God, actively, honestly, and with that faith in Christ we pray. Would you lead us, Diane? God our Father, lead us to believe totally in the real and true presence of your Son Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Dear Father, it is your will, if it is your will, please stop the coronavirus from returning throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you teach us that every human being is of immortal value in your eyes. Protect the unborn, the elderly, those facing terror, disease, or disaster. Protect our military wherever they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as you call all of us to return to Sunday Mass, however, give everyone peace of mind to respond with comfort and caution. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, heal the sick, particularly those whose names are in our book of prayer intentions, and especially Joseph Lamb, baby Walter, Jim Cassidy, Susan Albrecht, Donna Downing, Debbie Howard, Joanne Noyes, Dennis Weikheiser, Gina Callahan, Dennis D'Augusto, Joanne Fran, Robert Monaco, Jennifer Jackson Hunt, Mary Peters, John Vaughn, Patricia Doran, and all still suffering from the coronavirus. Lift their spirits, heal them, and give them peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, Christ is the salvation of all who die in him. Grant eternal rest to Michael Johansson, Thomas W. Egan, Mary T. Kearns, Father Paul Roos, and Joseph Corrieri, for whom this Mass is being offered, and all the souls of those who have died from the coronavirus, as well as our military who have died serving our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So all these pictures and statues are meant to help us with devotion. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
become for us the breath of life. Blessed are you, Lord. In your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you. This is my daily bread. It will become our spiritual. Beloved, pray, pray well that your gifts and mine may become Christ actually, and he catch us up to the glory of God the Father, the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all its holy church. Be pleased, Almighty God, our Father, to accept the offerings of your people, your church, for in your mercy you have given these humble things to us to be offered. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, you will transform them into the sacrament of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through who Christ our Lord. As one of us, all alone, he accepted death so that we might all escape from dying. As one human being, he chose to die so that in your sight all of us might live and live forever. And so, O oh God, with all your angels and saints, we praise you as we sing. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord our Father, and from the beginning of the world, you are tirelessly, ceaselessly at work so that we human beings might become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offering and pour out on them now the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost, we could not find you or approach to you. You loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. 
but before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he, broke, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood shed upon the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Take your part, help with the prayer, use the word, Alleluia, try it. Alleluia. Therefore, O Father, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover, our surest peace, we celebrate his death and his victory, his resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed second coming, we offer to you who are always faithful and merciful as our God to us, this gift, this sacrificial victim, Jesus, who reconciles to you the whole human race. And we cry. Hallelujah. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on all of those you unite to yourself by this sacrifice of your Son. And grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, as we partake of the one bread and the one chalice, we may be gathered into one body in Christ, healed of every division, and we cry. Hallelujah. Be pleased, O Lord God, to keep us always together in mind of heart with Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop. Father, help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand at last before yourself. Saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin, Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, especially your dear friend, Joseph Corrieri and all those who have gone before us. We commend them now to your mercy humbly and ask they and we freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation may sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity in glory and we cry. Hallelujah. Through him and with him and in him O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of your Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
the Savior's command, informed by that divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The wonderful peace of Christ be with you. And with your spirit. Thanks for the blessing. Let's share it with each other. Peace of Christ. Thank you. Peace of Christ. Thanks. Right. <coughs> hey, commixio, e consecratio, corporis, et sanguinis. the receiving of your body and blood, my Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in my mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus himself. He takes away the sins of the whole world. Bless those called to this, the supper of the Lamb.
please join with us in singing the communion song, I Am the Bread of Life.
Isn't it wonderful that the pandemic taught us to return to an ancient Catholic practice that those who are unable to go to communion can already receive him spiritually. Jesus, we trust you. Why would we not? Jesus crucified, accept our homage and our love. Jesus, we kiss your wounds. Take us into the glory of the Father. Make us good people. Thank you. Praise you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, may our communion in this sacrament with your Son, this mystery that we have consumed as food, save us all and confirm in us the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I said earlier, thank you to the music people. Thank you for serving. Thank you to the ushers. Thank you all for being so devout. I remind you that CCD is coming up. So you of children in the parish, check the bulletin to um, register them for religious ed. Two big things coming. One is coming in two weeks. That's the 10 o'clock mass on the 22nd of August here in the upper church as a special mass prompted by what happened during the pandemic, that all those who died, whether from coronavirus or not, many of whom died all alone, and their families who mourn them and are still grieving them, the Mass will be for them. This is a special moment. So I invite you to take a look at incoming, tell people about it. It's a good idea. And then a month from now, on the 26th of September, we'll do another Mass here at 10 as a celebration of our coming back, please God. <laughs> and we'll have a picnic in the backyard, okay? You know, like to have a picnic? That would be good, you know? All right. We're looking for three more Eucharistic ministers to help with giving communion to the homebound. Remind you, the confessions are available at St. Joseph Center from 3 to 3.45 every Saturday. We're continually uh, taping and presenting uh, on our website this Mass every weekend. Thank you very much. Let's stand. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let's bow before God, ask his blessing, and affirm the blessing with amen. God bless you and keep you. Amen. God smile on you and be kind to you. Amen. God live in your hearts and give you peace. Amen. The good God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We can do this. Let's go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join with us in singing the recessional number 588 in the green book. Shout to the Lord, number 588. Of your hands, 
Great song. Ha <laughs> ha. My Jesus. My Jesus. <laughs> 